All right, how's it going, YouTube? This is Grant with Retro Games and More coming at you with a new video. This is going to be uh, probably my final video on my NES to PC build. I pretty much got it done. Um, everything's installed. I got the Serial ATA DVD uh, CD burner installed. Excuse me. And I'll actually show you a little bit of an overview of the system. But yeah, all right, I'm going to go over the system with you and uh, show you all the uh, the things that I've done with it. I'll take it apart and show you the ins and outs, and I will show you uh, how fast it boots up and, and how it runs uh, Windows 7. So here it is. This is the NES PC. Underneath the lid here, we have the DVD CD burner. That is a uh, slim serial ATA drive. And there's the controller ports. And the the main thing that I, I told myself before I even started the build was that you know I wanted to keep the integrity of the system intact. I wanted it to look like a Nintendo when it sat on your shelf. You know, I didn't want it to have big vents. You know, everywhere. You know, that just kind of took away from the appeal and the uh, you know this nostalgia of the original uh, Nintendo. So I definitely wanted to you know for, at least from the front view it to look like it's just a standard Nintendo so and I think I achieved that it still it still keeps its uh, original uh, flair that it had it you know still looks like a Nintendo the only way that you would know that it's a PC is if you know you maybe you saw the USB here but if you turn it around and you saw you know all the uh, uh, the uh, IOs on the back you know the inputs and, and the fan but yeah so just a view of the out the outer of the casing Right here on the side, I have the headphone and microphone jack. I put it on the side here, you know, so if you do have it on your shelf and you just want to, you know, if you're just doing some type of editing or maybe just, uh, you know, watching YouTube and you want to, uh, you know, watch it uh, without it being loud, then, you know, plug up your headphones on the side here. That makes it where you don't have to go, you know, turn the system around and plug it up back there, but you could if you wanted to. And uh, right here, this is probably one of my favorite integrations of the system. This uh, knob, if you can see that, that controls all three fans of the of this system. I have two uh, intake fans on the bottom that uh, that blow directly on the bottom of the motherboard, right underneath the CPU, and right next to the hard drive there. And I have an exhaust fan on the back here that dissipates the heat outwards. So that's definitely one of my favorite integrations is the fan speed control. Uh, to keep the you know the system quiet, you know you can just keep the fans all the way down to the uh, to the lowest setting, and uh, and you know I've said it before and I'll say it again, like this is one of my favorite uh, my favorite qualities of this motherboard that I use, the Giotto motherboard was how cool the CPU stays. I mean, know it's an Intel Atom and it's going to stay cool anyways, but I mean it very very seldomly gets over 18 degrees Celsius, so it's very very cool system. On the back here, we have the uh, the I/O shield with all the the inputs. Uh, we have the exhaust fan. We have the DC jack input. Uh, and that's another good thing about this is that uh, there's no need for a big bulky power supply or anything like that. There's HDMI out, and uh, the, the HDMI works really well. Uh, I've only had one issue with it uh, in the sense of what TV I used it with. Um, I have an old Toshiba that's probably about probably about one of the really early. Uh, flat screens when they first came out, um, and uh, it doesn't like the resolution that the Nintendo defaults to, so I can't get picture out on that. But you know that's a you know six seven year old uh, flat screen TV. Uh, on any TVs you know manufactured within the last three or four years or so, it should work fine. It just uh, some of them might not like the the actual video resolution output that it uh, that it puts out. Uh, but you know if you ever have any problems with that, you also have the uh, VGA out, uh, which I can use on my older L uh, LCD TV, excuse me, and this is the optical audio out, um, USB of course, USB 2.0, uh, I believe it is a gigabit ethernet if I'm not mistaken, it might just be uh, 10100, but I'm not real for sure, I'll have to uh, look, uh, look into that again, this is standard audio ports, you get your, uh, your output and your microphone input. And on this side of the unit, we have one USB port, and uh, there is options to even add one more. Um, basically, there is six USBs uh, that are accessible with this motherboard. We have two headers, and then we have two directly on the back. 
and uh, and I got the controller ports in the front there taking up two, uh, two of the USB slots and have this taken up one. So there's one open on the board, but uh, but I just decided to go with one extra one because basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to have your mouse, your keyboard in the back, and you know what else you're going to have plugged up to it. Maybe a flash drive you can plug up to that, or you know if you want to use that as your home PC, you can even hook up a printer, but. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I know it's not the prettiest thing in the world. I try to keep it, you know, as non-invasive as possible. Uh, but uh, this is actually like the third USB port that I've tried to make work with this opening. And, and uh, it was just, <laughs> this was probably the biggest uh, the biggest problem I had with, with making the unit is, is trying to get this USB port right. So, you know, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it works. Uh, on the bottom of the unit here, uh, we have... Uh, the foot pads, we have the intake fans, and we have the serial ATA uh, laptop hard drive. I think it's an 80 gig serial ATA. You know, it's it's not much, but you know, you know, the only thing that I, I really wanted this system to be used for, anyways, was you know, basic web browser uh, and a an emulator, basically. You know, so I could just plug up my original controllers into the ports and and play uh, play some old school Nintendo games without you know having to pull out the system and uh, you know all the cartridges which I you know I do have anyways but but yeah okay what we'll do now is I'll go ahead and, and take it apart and uh, show you the inside of the unit and then I'll boot it up and show you how it runs so basically there's just four screws the standard four you know, well actually originally there were six screws holding the casing together but uh, but I actually had to bypass these two uh, screw uh, ports because I have the DVD drive here and the uh, the I/O shield here, so I can only utilize four of the ports or screw holes, which is fine. All right, so let's take a look at the inside of the unit. Okay, so let's get a little close up here. Here it is. A lot of wires, kind of a big mess, but it works. So here is the serial ATA drive with the slim serial ATA and slim power out plugged directly into the board. Here is the 4 gigs of DDR2 uh, PC2 5200 RAM, pretty decent RAM, and CPU and GPU are mounted underneath the heat sink here. But yeah, it's just kind of it's kind of a basic setup. It's just a, uh, a mini ITX motherboard um, with a wireless in mounted underneath so you get wireless access as well as uh, standard Ethernet. But yeah, so you've probably all seen the, uh, the build of the computer before. So I'll go ahead and put it back together and show you how the system works boot it up. Alright guys, let's take a look and see how quick this old system boots up. Now this is running Windows 7 uh, Home Premium 64-bit edition, since it has the dual-core Intel Atom uh, with a 64-bit architecture uh, integrated, so it can uh, it can run 64-bit operating systems, which makes things a little snappier, especially with the four gigs. As you can tell, it's not the fastest fastest system in the world, but uh, but it's not bad. It's not bad for you know, kind of a, a dis decent uh, mid-range system.
So here it is. It's kind of a, you know, so like I said, it's just a standard computer. Uh, all I really wanted it for was to, you know, play my old school NES games and, you know, web browse and kind of do the basic, basic stuff. Um, it's running Windows 7 Home Premium, 64-bit edition with all the latest updates. And, um, and I'm actually going to be uh, releasing another video here shortly that's going to be a video uh, more or less advertising it for sale. Uh, more, more than likely going to put it on eBay in the next couple of days here, if, if not even today maybe, as soon as I just make sure everything is running good. Uh, and then I'm going to be releasing a video that's uh, specifically made to be posted on eBay, uh, just uh, overviewing everything one more time. And uh, yeah, if you are interested in purchasing this system, um, you know, let me know, uh, and I'll also be putting up uh, the link to the eBay uh, page for sale. So, but yeah, let's go ahead and run through uh, how this thing can play some some NES games. So what we need is the controller, and all you have to do. is plug your controller just like you would to an ODNES system right up to port number one or two and you can do multiplayer on here because both the both the ports are supported and you open up your favorite emulator and I got two emulators on this system right now and I have JNES uh, which is probably my favorite NES emulator but I also have Nestopia and the reason I have two different ones is because Nestopia is um, I believe it's ran at, uh, you can run it under DirectX 9 uh, so it can actually be recorded by Fraps which is a uh, uh, a gaming application that tells you what your frame rate on your games and also you can record game footage but for this uh, for this demo here I'll just use uh, JNES And we'll just play some, uh, let's see, just some old Super Mario Brothers. this controller uh, to, to any emulator you like. If you have a GBA emulator, a SNES emulator, you can map it directly to that. It's just going through standard USB interface uh, inside of the casing. And uh, you can, yeah, you can just set it up as, as any, uh, any controller for any emulator that you like. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to, to give, me a, give me a holler and uh, let me know if you want some info on the system or just you know, general stuff. Leave some comments down below, and keep an eye out for a uh, another video coming out. Just me trying to <laughs> trying to push the system to sell. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. Have a good one.